In this video, I'd like to review some of the important concepts from last week so that we're better prepared to move forward this week as we transition into the new quarter. I'd like for you to uh, make sure that you copy down all of the examples that I complete. Uh, now, you won't have to write down the problems themselves because they come from the textbook and you can find the actual problems in the textbook, but any of the notes or any of the work that I write down uh, on the page, I would like for you to copy as well. This way you can refer back to these techniques. You can refer back to these problems as you study for the quiz this week. So this problem number 4.72, of course, is in chapter four, and it's um, exercise number 72. Uh, now, if you remember, the exercise numbers continue from section to section. So um, I think number 72 actually falls in section two or maybe section three. So you'll have to find it there um, in your electronic copy of the textbook. But before I actually begin this particular problem, I'd like to review the special addition rule for probabilities. That states that the probability of event A or B occurring is simply equal to the probability of event A occurring plus the probability of event B. Now, this is a special addition rule because uh, there's an important criteria that must be met, and that's that um, event a and B must be mutually exclusive. So as long as event A and B cannot happen at the same time, As long as event A and B cannot happen at the same time, then they are mutually exclusive. And if they are mutually exclusive, then we can apply this probability rule. So let's see what the question asks us to find. The online publication CyberStats by MediaMark Research Incorporated reports internet access and usage. The following is a percentage distribution of household income for households with home internet access only. So this isn't a frequency table, it's more like a relative frequency table. And it looks like we've labeled four different events that may occur. Event A is the percentage of families that earn under $50,000 as the household and have home internet access. So again, those that have home internet access, 45, I'm sorry, 47.5% of those with home internet access only have a household income, combined income of under $50,000. And that's what we will call event A. Event B is the uh, likelihood, or I should say the, the income, between $50,000 and $74,999, so just under $75,000. 19.9% of the households earn this amount of money, and so on. Now, we know that this is mutually exclusive because no two families, or, or no family can fall into two different events. For example, um, if you make $30,000, as a family, um, you're, you're going to be falling in, in event A. You can't be in both event A and B or any other uh, pair of events. You can only fit in one or another. You can't fit in more than one. So these are mutually exclusive. Suppose that a household with home internet access is selected at random. Let A denote the event of the household has an income under 50,000, so on and so forth. This is them describing the events again. We need to apply the special addition rule to find the probability that the household obtained has an income under $75,000 for part A. 
$50,000 or above for Part B and Part C between $50,000 and $149,999 inclusive. Well, again, since we're using the special edition rule, uh, we recognize we are working with mutually exclusive events, and that states that the probability of one event or another occurring is simply equal to the sum of these events. So we don't typically uh, think about this rule all the time um, when we apply it. Sometimes we just move forward and use it. So if I if I need to know what's the probability that I that I pick a family uh, whose income is under seventy five thousand dollars, well. Uh, most of us would immediately recognize that if they earn under $75,000, they're either in event B or they are in event A. And we could simply add those together. But I'd like to write it out, uh, write out our solution this time using that special addition rule since the instructions asked us to do so. Um, so we are uh, definitely working with event A and B. So um, the special edition rule will be used exactly as it's written. So for part A, I would write a solution like this. Um, the probability of event A or B occurring is equal to the probability of event A plus the probability of event B occurring. Now this is what we're looking for. We don't know the probability of event A or B right now, but we can find it because we do know what the probability of event A is. That's this 0.475. And we do know what probability of B is. That's this one, the 0.199. Notice I'm not using the percentages here. I'm using the probabilities that are equivalent to those per percentages. And the sum of these two comes out to 0 0.674. We could check that with a calculator if we needed to. But the probability that someone earns, or I'm sorry, that a family earns under $75,000 is 0.674, or about 67%. We will again use this probability to answer part B. What's the probability of earning $50,000 or above? This time we have three parts to it rather than just two. And that's okay because the special probability rule um, can be combined with more than uh, two parts. So um, if I were writing this out using probability notation, it might look something like this. Probability of A, I'm sorry, we're not using A because A is uh, not in this range, but probability of B or C or D occurring because again we're talking about um, B, C, or D. These are all of the uh, income ranges that are greater than $50,000. Since these are mutually exclusive we can simply add them together. Probability of B plus the probability of C plus the probability of D. So the probability of B, well, we know that from the last problem as 0.199. The probability of C is 0.247. And the probability of D looked like it was 0.079. Be sure that you are rewriting your percentages as decimals very carefully. So I'll bring up a calculator in view this time to complete this work. Uh, we want 0.199 plus 0.247 plus 0.079, and that sum is 0 0.525. So the probability that a family earns 50000 or more is the probability of event B or C or D occurring, and that is 0 0.525. And lastly, between 50,000 and 149,000 inclusive, 
Well, this time we're only looking at event B or C. So what are the chances that I pick a family uh, that falls in event B or C? So it might look this way when we write it up. Probability of B or C is equal to the probability of B plus the probability of C, since these are mutually exclusive. And probability of B was 0 0.199. Probability of C was 0 0.2. 247 and that sums to 0 0.446 I believe so this is a nice neat concise way to uh, show your work utilizing the um, the special addition formula or special addition rule for events, for mutually exclusive events. Let's look at another example. This one comes um, right after the last problem. This is number uh, 4.73. The US Coast Guard maintains a database of the number, source, and location of oil spills in US navigable and territorial waters. Uh, the following is a probability distribution for location of oil spill events. So this doesn't represent where the oil itself is, but where the spill occurs. So um, um, these locations are mutually exclusive because uh, when an oil spill occurs, it exists in one of these locations. Um, the actual spill itself doesn't originate in more than one location, even though it might spread to others. So again, since these are mutually exclusive, all of these events are mutually exclusive, then we can use the special addition property, special addition rule. Let's go ahead and label these events just for clarity's sake. Um, if the a spill occurs in the Atlantic Ocean. Let's call that event A. And if it happens in the Pacific Ocean, we'll call that B, and so on. So the instructions tell us to apply the special addition rule to find the percentage of oil spills in US navigable and territorial waters that occur in an ocean. So all of those events that occur in an ocean, well, there we go. We've got the Atlantic Ocean, Pacific Ocean, and that's it. Uh, Gulf of Mexico, Great Lakes, other lakes, rivers and canals, bays and sounds, harbors, and others. So these are the only two events um, that include an ocean. So those are events A and B. So using the special edition rule, it might look something like this. Uh, the probability that a spill occurs in either A or B, the Atlantic or Pacific Ocean, well that's equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B, since these are mutually exclusive events. So in this case A is 0 0.008 and event B has a probability of 0 0.037 and we can add those two together and that results in 0 0.045 probability of event A or B also known as a spill in either the Atlantic or Pacific Ocean is 0 0.045 about a four and a half percent chance part B the probability that an oil spill will occur in a lake or a harbor. Uh, so this time lakes are event D, E, or H. And if we were to write this out, it might look something like this. The probability of event D or, now I forget the other two, let me double check them. Uh, D, E, or H, D or E or H, so the probability that a spill occurs in either of those locations 
is simply equal to the sum of each of those probabilities. Probability of it happening at location D plus the probability of it occurring in location E plus the probability of the oil spill occurring in event H. So for D we have 0, 2, 0. For E we had 0, 0, 0.002. And for H we have 0.161. So these three summed together, um, 0 0.020 plus 0 0.002 plus 0 0.161 equals 0 0.183. So the probability that a spill occurs in a lake or a, a harbor is equal to 0 0.183 or approximately an 18.3 percent chance. Let's answer this last one. Now what's the probability that they do not occur in a lake, ocean, river, or canal? So not a lake, river, ocean, or canal. Um, if it were me I would probably identify those events that do fall in a lake, river, ocean, or canal. So uh, lake, river, ocean, or canal, that's what we're looking for. Uh, here's an ocean, here's another ocean, lakes, rivers, canals, I think that about does it. Uh, lakes, rivers, canals, ocean. Okay, we've got all of those highlighted. Um, so if we were to add these values together, it would show uh, the probability or likelihood of a spill occurring in these locations, but I want the probability of the event occurring in not these locations. So instead, I'm going to look at those that didn't fall into this highlighted region. So we're now looking at C, G, H, and I. So part C can be answered by finding the probability of C or G or H or I occurring. And again, since these are mutually exclusive events, we can sum together all of their probabilities. So I went ahead and filled this in to make the video a little bit shorter. You can pause and um, fill in this data if you didn't see it on your own. Um, but what we have here is the probability of a spill occurring not in a lake, ocean, river, or canal. And that comes out to be a probability of 0.567, or approximately 56.7% chance. Now I'm going to stop this video here because this concludes our practice with the special edition rule. Uh, there will be another video that picks up in just a moment, so please make sure that you watch it and copy the examples from it as well.